Justin Cook again with the Critical Points crew, and I want to talk about some more ultrasound stuff in a more advanced realm, this being the oblique IJ approach, which I'm really having a lot of fun with lately. I've taught this to residents a number of times, and they seem to pick it up pretty quickly and like it a lot. And I think what it has to offer is some pretty cool safety advances. So hats off to these guys, uh, Phelan and Haggerty, um, and I have not actually talked to this, these guys, nor um, have really sought credit for using this uh, in this discussion here, but um, these are the first guys that I know of who put this stuff to paper and started talking about this technique. I think people have been dabbling with it for a while. Let me explain the concept behind it. As far as how we've done ultrasound guided lines in the past, there's the short axis or transverse approach, and again these images are from their article and at this point used not with permission. Principle being that we have the probe oriented uh, perpendicular to the vessel and then the needle is in a perpendicular arrangement to the probe. We're putting the needle under the center of the probe and we're watching the needle hopefully go into the vessel which we see in a transverse plane on our ultrasound uh, screen. Contrast this to the longitudinal approach where we've rotated the probe 90 degrees and we look at the vessel lengthwise and then the needle goes in in plane with the probe and what's great about this technique is that we allow ourselves visualization of the needle continuously going into the tissue. That's advantageous because a lot of the times we as learners and even as more experienced ultrasonographically skilled needle inserters wind up putting the needle too deep and going to uh, the back wall of the vessel and often deeper into nasty things we don't want to hit below. So if we can which, watch the needle continuously that's a great thing for patient safety and something that I try and advocate for. The problem is it's pretty technically challenging because keeping the needle in the plane of the probe is so hard because the width of the image that you're seeing on the probe uh, on the screen is about a millimeter thick. So if you're just slightly off axis, so if you're kind of turning a little towards this side of the probe or towards this side of the probe, you lose visualization of the needle. And that's the inherent technical challenge of any longitudinal approach. That said, the safety benefits of seeing the needle continuously is awesome. Um, the other problem with doing the longitudinal approach is that you can slip off axis of the vessel and not see the vessel. And so if this were to slide, say, this way, and this were, say, an artery, you could easily mistake the vessel you're looking at for uh, the vein, and it's actually the artery, and then you hit something you don't want to hit. So that's one of the other challenges of the long longitudinal approach. So what these guys have come up with is saying, oh, why don't we combine the best of both worlds? We'll just rotate the probe 90 deg uh, 45 degrees obliquely, We'll still insert the needle in the plane of the probe so that we can continuously continuously visualize the needle, but we actually are seeing the vessels more or less still in a relatively transverse orientation, and we can watch the needle continuously go into our target vessel while often being able to image another vessel in the same view that we don't want to hit. And that might be, say, down here on the image. I'll demonstrate that for you in a second. But it really is kind of a unique combination of the best of both worlds, the thing you have to surrender to in terms of suspending your disbelief here is that once you insert the wire, it has to kind of make this 45 degree turn here, which happens pretty easily, especially uh, in an IJ or other relatively capacious vessel as opposed to somebody's um, smaller, say, brachial if you're doing this on a peripheral line. So again, just to review, this is the standard approach, the transverse technique, where we have the needle going perpendicular to the probe and we're getting a transverse orientation view of the vessels. The oblique just has us rotate at 45 degrees, but in this case the needle is going in the plane of the probe. So here's a version of me doing it with a helmet cam on. I'm a big fan of the helmet cam lately. I got it for Christmas. I think it's fun for ultrasound as well as uh, skiing and jumping off cliffs and doing stib stuff that I don't do. Um, here's how it looks you rotate your probe 45 degrees. We see on the screen that we get this oblique view of the vessel. We come in in plane and we look closely to make sure that we can be right in the center of the probe and then we can visualize that needle going right into the vessel. Boom! We got our blue stuff. How satisfying is that? And then we dump our probe and we pass our wire. Looking at it from another perspective, this is the same sort of dummy. I like to have my bevel tip oriented thusly, and then you see it coming in from the side, boom, you're in the vessel, we get flashback, no longer nice blue stuff. I guess I diluted it out with saline by this point. So, 
the oblique technique, pretty cool. Um, in a real person, this is what it looks like. So here is the needle inserted into the skin, going through sternocleidomastoid muscle and penetrating into the IJ here. But what's nice is, as opposed to the dummy, you actually can see the other targets and avoid them. So this is the patient's carotid right here. And so that's a structure we would want to hit. But I can continuously visualize this bad stuff, this good stuff, and the needle in its entire course if I stay nice and on axis with my needle position. I think it's a fantastic approach. So in summary, I think it's relatively easy to adopt. Um, the clear advantage is it offers continuous visualization of the entire length of the needle tip and seeing all the structures you need to see. But the challenge remains that you have to be very rigorous in staying in plane with the probe with your needle insertion. I hope you guys get some good experience with this and give it a try, and I think it's a great technique to adopt. Thanks.